Alright guys, welcome back to Formula 1 News. Mercedes have explained what constitutes their big upgrade that Total Wolf promised here for the Silverstone Grand Prix. It's a new front wing on the Mercedes W40, not a substantial array of changes that some were expecting, but they clearly have very high hopes for this new upgrade on the front wing and the way that it's going to affect the airflow from the front all the way to the rear of the car on a weekend where front end stability and grip is massively important around this specific circuit. Very much intrigued to hear your thoughts in the comments. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always. First of all, it seems the way to get another team onto the Formula 1 grid and into the paddock is for them to be a fictitious team and be working on a film. But here we go. They have room in the paddock for another team. And this weekend, it's Sonny Hayes and Joshua Pierce of this apex fictional film with Brad Pitt, Joseph Kaczynski directing and his Ferrari wheeling the SF23 in front of their garage. And um, this is another pretty crazy shot, right? I'm guessing is a mix of actual mechanics here and just actors dressed as mechanics but um yeah pretty wild and those attending the Grand Prix this weekend I'm sure we'll see a lot of action actually from the cars on track this is the car in question this is not a Formula 1 car this is a Formula 2 car specced up by Mercedes and outfitted by Mercedes to look like the current generation of Formula 1 cars and it does it's actually quite significantly smaller but it looks very similar to the current setup that we have you guys you know the front wheel rims and stuff like this that we have featured on today's car these are actually legitimate brands as well, of course. IWC sponsors Mercedes as well. And um, this is a Mercedes-powered car with AMG on the back. So they're benefiting somewhat from doing this. And this is a nice-looking livery, to be honest. It reminds some people of the the um, what, the what rich energy days of the Haas. But also even the, the classic Lotus cars, right? You know, the colour combination is kind of nice. And there's actually been some footage here of the cars on track. Of course, for the purposes of filming for the, well, the film itself. And here they go side by side through Stowe. So um, it's interesting, right? And those attending will be able to see more of things like this. This, for example, coming round out of Club Corner through the start of the... Is this the Sir Lewis Hamilton straight? Technically, I forget exactly. But there you go. There's two cars that are dressed up to look like F1 cars that are actually F2 cars. But um, here they go. But the crazy thing is they won't just be taking part this weekend on the days where there's no track running such as today. They will be integrated into the weekends. The show team will ride in the formation lap of the Grand Prix to line up with the other cars. And this is where people are like, well, I've got a second here, right? Are you sure this is a good idea to have these cars? Cars. They're not Formula 1 cars, they look pretty similar, but you know, they're not the same size or like power or anything like that on the track with the other F1 cars at the same time. I don't know whether this is actually meant to be the formation lap for the Grand Prix, as in literally two minutes before the Grand Prix starts, these guys are out on track driving around, and then I guess they would just put into the pits after that rather than actually line up on the starting grids, which would be an absolute mess. And you'd think in the, I don't know the plot of the film, but you would think that Brad Pitt's character and Dams and Idris's character is probably not starting from P19 or P21 and P22, you'd think they would be probably starting further up the grid than that. So I don't think they're going to try and disrupt the weekends. He might mean here, Giuliano de Kessa, the kind of um, the scouting lap, right, or whatever they call it, the reconnaissance lap, where maybe 30, 45 minutes before the Grand Prix, they go out and do a couple of laps of the track. Maybe they'll go out then with the other cars. I know that Lando Norris said, like, please, guys, don't disrupt the preparation of the actual Grand Prix. But it's definitely interesting that contrary to what I expected, we probably will have Brad Pitt. I don't know if he's actually always driving the car, I think he is sometimes, but sometimes he's not in the car. Probably they have, you know, they mix it around a little bit. They will be on track with those cars at the same time there are Formula 1 cars on the track, which is not what I expected. And it could create some, you know, could you imagine if anything happened there and there were some incidences with certain drivers? It could be absolute chaos. It's probably not going to happen. I'm sure they've thought about these eventualities and there's been joking around it. I think the team is like APX GP or something. And Ocon's like, yeah, these guys bring in some upgrades for Sunny Hayes. We'll have to see how that goes. Could be a threat on the weekend in more ways than one. And um, yeah, it seems like Brad Pitt and not being a real Formula 1 team is the way to actually get onto the paddock as the 11th team and teams like Andretti and others will keep trying and there's obviously the room for them if they really wanted to make this happen. Quick update on Austria actually as well. It's pretty funny that Aston Martin confirms they check 
checked every single lap that Alonso and Stroll did to ensure that they wouldn't be affected before they put their kind of request in to protest the result of the Grand Prix. And also it's now been confirmed they will be adding gravel traps outside of turn 9 and turn 10 to avoid any of the track limits drama. There's a few alternatives they could go for here. I think honestly the idea of the fact that the entire curb is drivable over with no problems, that to me is the issue there because if that blue part of the curbing was just grass, as it is at many other corners, you wouldn't be able to get away with that. And the teams wouldn't try and the drivers wouldn't try and do it. But because it's just all runoff, you know, they've tried to push the boundaries to get an edge in the past. The, you know, the, the stewards haven't really cared or haven't really policed it properly. This year they did. And I'm sure that if we were to run it back this weekend in Austria, it would have way less incidents. But the drivers have felt like they can get away with it for some time now. So they've been getting away with it. And um, this weekend they certainly couldn't. But the issue with gravel traps is, okay, they're expensive. And there also are other issues in terms of like, let's just say you've got normal cars going there for a track day on the weekends. Do you really really want to be getting a car stuck in gravel, the initial expense of that one, just for one weekend of the year for the actual Grand Prix Formula One circus to make it better. You know, there's a debate to be weighed up on that, given there are other alternatives. But the main issue was MotoGP possibly didn't want it to happen. But yet apparently MotoGP don't care. They're like, yeah, fine, gravel traps, no worries, guys. Go for it if you think it's the best. So it makes you wonder why this hasn't happened before now. I guess it's expensive, difficult to maintain, but that's what's going to happen. So next year, gravel traps on the outside of those corners. So if you do go over track limits, you will have two tires in the gravel and you will be, you know, spinning out or losing a lot of time. I don't think I mentioned this for you guys yesterday, but this might be one of the prettiest liveries I've seen so far this year, a special livery that Williams are introducing here for Silverstone. Look at the state of this Williams car, that British flag on the back. It looks absolutely stunning. It's kind of funny, really, how just a couple of days after the 4th of July, the first Grand Prix after, Logan Sargent is here with a brilliant, you know, Union Jack on the back of his car, but it still looks pretty good. That's to celebrate 800 Grand Prix for the Williams team. But to talk about some of the other teams that are racing this weekend, here's some rear wing analysis, usually medium-ish downforce that these teams will probably be running this weekend. Hamilton also comment on his Mercedes future because we probably expected by now some more evidence to come around about what his contract situation is, whether he's re-signed it yet or anything. Nothing on that really, but he does say that he's still got 100% faith in the team. It's taking longer for all of us to get where we want to be, but he pretty much is saying that the events in Austria haven't exactly changed his mind, as you wouldn't expect them to on staying around with Mercedes for a good another few years. I wonder what the contract will be, whether it will run until the end of 2025 or whether it would even run until the end of 2026 so that he gets one year under the new regulations and if Mercedes were to nail it in 26 then potentially he gets his eighth title then if he doesn't get it in 24 or 25 so that might be a plan that Mercedes come up with so I guess we'll see how that one goes but also he mentions the upgrades Mercedes are bringing this weekend predominantly the new front wing it's kind of interesting right because the Mercedes team seems to differ somewhat on whether they think it's a big update or whether it's not we've seen this a few times over the last few months where someone's promising major changes then Hamilton says no it's not going to really do that much and that's what he says here the new front wing a step in the right direction it's not a huge huge package or anything we're just making a step-by-step -step progress but clearly they think it's going to do something quite significant here because Total Wolf says that this is a big upgrade in Silverstone now the front wing is a very important part of the car it's probably arguably the most important part of the car it hits the air first it determines how the air flows around the entire the rest of the car even all the way to the rear of the car and how the beam wing works and everything is determined in part by what happens at the front wing so if they've discovered something big here and their front wing team if anything Mercedes is probably the most innovative in the entire paddock we know that they've got all these tricks they do around the end plate and stuff that we talked about before the season even began but this is meant to be according to Total Wolf a big upgrade like a big one even though it's only affecting seemingly one part of the car this is that new front wing as spotted by Andreas Halt here. So it does look somewhat different. I mean, these flaps, you can change the direction of. You can't get a full picture of exactly what this is looking like here just from this angle on, let's say, the end plates and stuff like that. Just, I guess, comparing this image where you can kind of see the front wing and the way that it curves around these upper elements to what it looks like now does look quite significantly different, but it's a different angle and it's difficult to say. But um, even minor changes here could have major impacts on how the car performs because it's just such a critical element of the car that an upgrade that works well could 
genuinely give them a couple of tenths of a second. I'm not sure they'll get that in Silverstone. Their main hope is probably that their car just suits this circuit better, right? They're only a couple of tenths off Red Bull back in Spain. If this upgrade brings them a little bit closer, Red Bull aren't bringing any upgrades this weekend, right? And Silverstone suits them pretty well. It should be a good weekend for them theoretically, but um, other teams will be there nipping at their heels, if not even ahead of them, right? Even Alano Norris says, we'll see in a second, that he reckons, yeah, we could challenge Mercedes again this weekend. So that's the plan for Mercedes. They've mentioned that hopefully this is going to move them further up the grid from their perspective. Look, it's going to be difficult to get close to Max in the Red Bull, but Max's luck in Silverstone over the last few years hasn't exactly been great. I mean, even last year when he looked set to win after that mistake from Science through Maggots Beckett and then into Chapel. Science went off the track, Verstappen comes through, but then he hits that piece of debris, gets stuck in his floor, and then he loses all sorts of pace, ends up finishing P7 after aggressively holding off Mick Schumacher, you guys might remember, in the latter stages of that race. So this supposedly big update from Mercedes doesn't seem like they're actually changing that much this weekend. They will be doing another consolidation change, though, upcoming in Spa. That might be a floor tweak, that might be something else, but um, they obviously have high hopes on this front wing upgrade. We'll quickly mention on the rear suspension just because people have spotted here what it actually looks like with some of the bodywork off and it seems to have been inspired to some degree by last year's RB18 with their design but it's still not where they want it to be the rear stability of this Mercedes is still the weakness that they have and ideally I think they would make some changes here they don't either have the budget or the ability to do so with the homologation of the gearbox and there's other things where if they're not changing the rear suspension now for this weekend they probably won't from now to the end of the season so it's circuits that are rear limited they will continue to struggle but um a circuit like Silverstone where it's certainly not more front limited because if you're all those high speed corners they should be better this weekend but even Norris seems confident they can potentially fight with Mercedes he says if we can fight with Mercedes I'll be happy with that which is um you know so either he thinks their upgrades are really good or he's just expecting Mercedes to not have the bounce back that some might have and even Charles Leclerc as well says they're making big progress making some steps forwards but um this track should expose their weaknesses which are their front end isn't quite as good as some of the other cars such as the Mercedes so they might struggle more here than elsewhere but I think it's pretty clear that the Red Bull will be quick absolutely everywhere so very much intrigued to hear your thoughts in the comments below hit the like button if you enjoyed subscribe if you're new take care and I'll see you next time